Well, good afternoon and welcome. This is Pastor Godinas. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Valiant for Biblical Truth. Continuing in the series of Great Men of the Bible. Today we're going to be looking at a man of short stature. A man by the name of Zacchaeus. If you will, turn your Bible to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 19. And we'll begin in just a moment. Give you some time to get there. I pray you're all doing well. I pray this message will speak to you. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 19, beginning in verse number 1. The Bible tells us, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Sounds like a divine appointment to me which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich, no doubt. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Jesus was headed his way, and Jesus was passing by. How about that? And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today, not tomorrow, for today I must abide at thy house. Verse number six tells us, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully and when they saw it they all murmured saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord behold Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore him fourfold and Jesus said unto him Listen to this now. This day, this day what is salvation come to this house? For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for another opportunity, Father, to speak to people's hearts. I pray, Father, you would use me in a great way, Father. Get me out of the way, Lord. Let the words that be spoken this afternoon be thine and not mine. Father, may the words go out in power and authority as they were initially and forever intended to be. And, Father, we'll make sure that you receive all the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Will you give me a few moments to digress before we get into the message? You see, I want everyone here to realize a few things. Number one, while it may be over 2,000 years ago since Jesus walked upon this earth and drew great crowds, may I tell you that he's still drawing people and crowds today. You see, wherever the Spirit of God is, it's drawing men to him. Oh, my friends, we need a great revival in this country in which we live in today like never before. Let me say that again. We need a great revival in this country in which we live like never before. Never before have we been faced with such great apostasy. Never before have we been faced with such antagonism from other countries in this world. Oh, my friends, we're in great need of a Savior today. Amen. Now listen to me. Not only does Jesus draw sinners to himself, he receiveth sinners. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Not only does he draw sinners to himself, he receiveth sinners. That's good news. You know, that was good news for me. Many years ago, when I called upon his name, saw my need of a Savior, repented of my sins, and was gloriously saved. Yes, sir. Amen. Now listen to me. 
Praise God that he didn't draw me to refuse me. Praise God that he didn't draw me to reject me. Praise God that he didn't draw me, you or anybody to just toss us aside. My friends, he drew us to receive him, to be received by him. Amen. May I tell you that not only does he draw sinners, not only does he receive sinners, he goes home with sinners according to our scripture. Look with me, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 5 through 7. Notice what the Bible tells us. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come, what come down? For today I must abide at thy house. I'll tell you what, anytime Jesus tells you that he must abide at your house, that's good news. Amen. Listen to me now. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. The heart was right, my friends. It's all about the heart. And when he, they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Hmm. Isn't that always the case, that murmuring crowd? They've always got something to say, but they never do anything. But they're there to criticize, and they're there to make a scene, and they're there to just put down anyone that would receive Christ or be about Christ's business. Listen to me now. According to the Bible, we're told that he was a rich man that lived near Jericho. Now, the city of Jericho is approximately 400 feet below sea level and is one of the lowest places on earth, spiritually and physically. Amen. Now, if you recall the story of the Good Samaritan, he was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, during the time of Jesus, that road that led down from Jerusalem to Jericho was known as a very dangerous path and was called the way of blood or the bloody pass. Why? Because of the blood which was shed by robbers who waited for strangers that they could ransack and rob. Can I tell you that whenever you're going down, you're moving in the wrong direction, both physically and spiritually. Amen. Many events occurred around Jericho, and there we meet Rahab the harlot, the accursed thing, the healing of blind Bartimaeus, and now a publican, the tax collector, named Zacchaeus. We are introduced to a man named Zacchaeus, who is a Jew and a tax collector. He had become so good at what he did that he became chief among the publicans or tax collectors because of the publican's job, they bid on various tax contracts from the Roman government. And they were known to extort or charge unreasonable amounts of additional monies for themselves. This resulted in them being despised and hated by all those who they collected taxes from. Now the Bible also tells us that Zacchaeus was a rich man and short of nature. He was not a tall man that stood six feet five, but rather he was a little short man. Now look with me at our scripture. Luke 19, verse number 3, and listen closely. This is very important, my friends. Verse number 3 tells us the following. And he sought to see Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. Why? He wanted to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press. That means the crowds, because he was little of stature. So why, I beg the question, so why would this Jewish tax collector be interested or concerned about wanting to see Jesus? Well, I believe something happened in Zacchaeus' life that created a desire to personally seek out and see Jesus Christ. You see, I believe in his going around 
and collecting taxes, he heard many stories from many different people. How this man Jesus opened the eyes of the blind, how he cleansed the leper, and how he raised the dead. Oh, my friends, that would get anybody's attention saved or lost. May I tell you that each of the three types of people I just mentioned are types of sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind, he cleansed the leper, and he raised the dead. Can I show you from the Word of God what the Bible says? Thank you. If you will, First, let's look at that blind man. That blind man, he's lost and he's undone. Why? Because he is blind to the truth and lives in what? Spiritual and physical darkness. Go to the Gospel of Mark. Go back a book. The Gospel of Mark, chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10. And look with me at verse number 46. By the way, this is a beautiful picture of New Testament salvation. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 10, verse number 46. And they came to Jericho. Here we go. We're back at Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. What else can a blind man do? He's unable to find his way. He's unable to get around. He's unable of working and earning a living. And so it was customary for them to sit on the way, on the roads, preferably near the gate where all the business transactions were being made and living on the offerings of those who would give unto him. Now listen, verse 47. And when he heard, this is what I believe happened to our friend, Mr. Zacchaeus. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And that murmuring crowd, look what they do in verse number 47. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on all of us, my friends. But here we go now. This is the God we serve. Verse number 49. And hearing those crowds, verse 49, and those cries of this man. And Jesus stood still. Amen. Jesus stood still and commanded him to what? To be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. He calleth Thee. Can I tell you? Jesus is calling you right now. He's speaking to you. Listen. And he casting away his garments. You see, there's some things you've got to get rid of before you can come to Jesus. Those garments represent the old ways. His old life. And he was glad to get rid of them, my friends. And so should you. And so was I. Listen. And he cast away his garments, rose, and he came to Jesus. Jesus didn't throw him away. Jesus didn't tell him to leave. He called him to come. And verse 51, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Here it is, my friends. What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? What is it that you would request of me? Bartimaeus. And the blind man said unto him, Lord, 
that I might receive my sight. Can I tell you there are countless blind people to the things of God in the world in which we live. There are countless spiritually bankrupt people in the world that we live. And all we need to do is call upon the name of Jesus and he'll answer that call and he'll receive you. He's waiting, my friends, if you've never done that. I'd get it settled today before the end of this message. And he tells him that he wants to receive his sight. And listen to this. Verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. What? Thy good works? No, I don't think so. Your wealth and your position? No, I don't think so. The Bible says, Thy faith. <laughs> Thy faith. Amen. By faith. By faith hath made thee whole. And immediately. You see, when Jesus heals, it doesn't come on an installment plan. And I tell you, when Jesus saves, you get it all at once. You don't get a little bit now and a little bit later and it's a great... No, my friends, you get it all. The Bible says, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. In other words, he understood who Jesus was and he wanted to follow him. Not because of what he did for him, but because he realized that this was the living, incarnate Son of God. How about you? So we see the first person, the blind man, He's lost and undone, and he's a picture of all those that are blind to the truth of the gospel, and not only lives in physical darkness, but is spiritually blind and spiritually bankrupt. But I'd like to introduce you to the second person. Turn with me to the gospel of Mark. We're in there. Go to chapter number one. Mark chapter one, verse number 40, if you will. Mark chapter one. Verse number 40. And I want to introduce you to the second person. The second person is a leper. Now in the Old Testament, a leper was someone who was unclean and could not live among the rest of the people. But spiritually, this man represents all of us who've never called upon the name of Christ that are lost and are unclean because of our sins. Amen. Now listen to me. Mark chapter 1 verse number 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him. That means begging and kneeling down to him. And listen to what he's saying. And saying unto him, if thou wilt, as if you would, if you would desire, if you would, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with what? Compassion. Amen. He moved with compassion. And did what? He put forth his hand. He put forth his hand and touched him. And saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. How about that? You see, once again, it's immediate. It doesn't come on an installment plan. Now go back, and we're going to meet our third person, the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 7, verses 11 through 15. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 7 beginning in verse number 11. And what we're going to see next is a man who was raised from the dead. Oh yes, my friends, this person was dead. You know what that is? That's a picture of a spiritually dead person. Someone without Christ. You're half alive, amen. 
You're in a physical body, but spiritually you are dead. Let's begin reading in verse number 11. Luke chapter 7, verse number 11. And the Bible tells us, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples with, with him, and much people. You see, everywhere that Jesus went, there always was a crowd. Amen. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. Look at verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, guess what? He had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. Cry not. Weep no more. Jesus is here. And look at verse 14. And he came and touched the buyer. And they that bear him stood still and listened to the words. And he said, Young man, young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God had visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the regions round about. So preacher, what's the application for me? Here's the application. When you allow the crowd which represents the world and the things of this world, to keep you from seeing and getting to Jesus, you'll never get to where you need to be, and you'll perish in the devil's hell for all of eternity. So listen to me now. So because of the crowd, Zacchaeus could not see Jesus. Why? Because he was a little short fellow. So what are you going to do now, Zacchaeus? Hey, all you Zacchaeuses out there, what are you going to do now? Amen? Are you going to let your handicap stop you? Well, he decided that he would not let his physical limitations stop him. You know what he did? He purposed in his heart he was going to see Jesus. How about you? He purposed in his heart that he was going to see Jesus. So guess what? He looked around him and saw what God had already provided, and he saw it, and he understood that the only way that he could see Jesus was to climb up that sycamore tree. Amen. And once he got up that tree, guess what happened? The view changed entirely. You see? Amen. The view changed entirely, and he could see everything clearly. Can I tell you? Here it is. Here's a spiritual principle for you. When you get above the crowd, you'll finally be able to see things clearly. Somebody say amen. Well, all of a sudden, he sees the one coming that he's been seeking. The one that came from the glory land. Yes, sir. The son of God. The one that had come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I want you to see that when you don't allow the crowd to get in the way, when you don't allow your handicap to stop you, when you climb above adversity and get to the place where you can see Jesus clearly, everything will change in your life and those around you. Now that great procession is making its way toward that tree where Zacchaeus was. And Jesus stops and looks up. Can I tell you? This is the only place in the Bible where Jesus looked up and a sinner looked down. Let me say that again. This is the only place in the Bible where, what? Jesus looks up and a sinner looks down. As Zacchaeus looked at Jesus, he immediately knew that he had never seen or met a man like this one. And then, look what happens. Jesus called out his name. Notice what he said. Make haste. Don't waste any time. Don't change your mind. Don't do anything. Calm down. Calm down and meet me. 
Amen. For today I must abide at the house. I must abide at the house. Well, can I give you a biblical nugget? That word abide in our text in Greek is meno, and it means to remain or continue. You know what he was saying? Jesus today, I must remain or continue in thy house. So what's the nugget, preacher? Aren't you glad that when Jesus goes home with you, he remains and continues? Look at verse number 7 for a moment. Back to our murmuring cog. Go back to chapter 19, verse number 7. And look at that murmuring cog. What did they say? And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Can I tell you that there's always going to be a murmuring crowd that's running their mouth, that don't like what's going on, and they're never happy with anything. Just look around you. Look at your friends. Look at your family. Look at your associates. And I'm sure there are some of them that just never stop murmuring. Amen. So look at what Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus says to us in verse number 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Do you know what Zacchaeus is doing? Here's another biblical nugget for you. He's getting right with his finances. Whoa, preacher. That's right. He's getting right with his finances. Now, there's a lot of people that get right. Amen. But here's the problem. But when it comes to their finances, that's a whole other story. Can I tell you, there are a lot of people that like to shout on credit. It's a lot of people that like to shout on credit and make a lot of noise and never, ever support God's work. Somebody help me now. So preacher, what are you trying to tell me? Here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you get right with God, and get your business right with God and man. You'll see the hand of God move in an amazing way in your life and in your family and all those around you. You will become a blessing unto them. Once Zacchaeus got right, look what happens in verse number nine. Look with me at verse number nine. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. It didn't just come to Zacchaeus. It came to that entire house. For so much as he is also is a son of Abraham. Amen. Look at verse 10. For the son of man, what was his purpose? Is come to seek and to save that which was what? Lost. Amen. So here's what you need to see. Zacchaeus. He made a decision that no matter what it would take, he would not allow tradition. He would not allow religion. He would not allow his handicap obstacles or people from keeping him from Jesus. How about you? Are you allowing tradition to get in the way? Are you allowing religion to get in the way? Are you allowing a handicap to get in the way or obstacles or people from coming to Jesus? Well, why, preacher? Because he knew and believed that Jesus was what? The only one that could forgive his sins and make him whole. What does the Bible tell us in John 14, 6? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Turn to 1 John, chapter number 5. 1 John, chapter number 5, verse number 12. 1 John, chapter number 5, verse number 12. Amen? Here we go, 1 John, chapter number 5, verse number 12. And the Bible tells us, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So how about you? Is there a time, a date, and a place that you came and got right with Jesus? 
that you saw your need of a Savior and recognized that you were a sinner with the wrath of God abiding upon you? Oh, my friends, this story is not just about a tax collector or a publican. My friends, this is a story about you and me. Some of us have been spiritually blind. We've been spiritually bankrupt. We've been spiritually unclean and spiritually dead. Well, preacher, I got good news for you this afternoon. You can settle it and get it all taken care of today. Can I tell you what you need to do? First, understand that you're a sinner. Okay? The Bible tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that word all, that's all that it means. That means everybody. So understand that you're a sinner. Well, I'm not as bad as, as this person that I know or this other person that I know. I'm actually head and heat, head and, head and tails, head and head, just heads above this guy or that woman or whatever. No, my friends, it doesn't matter. A sin is a sin. And God knows sin. Trust me. And he knows your sin. And the first thing you need to do is understand that you are a sinner. And as long as you're a sinner, you'll never get to heaven. Number two, understand that you can't do anything to save yourself. Sorry to tell you today, your good works, your tradition, your religion, your rabbi, amen, your pastor, your preacher, amen, your Sunday school teacher, your mama and your papa, your papa and your papa, they can't help you. Well, preacher, what do I do? Amen, I got great news for you. God made a way for sinful man to be reconciled back unto him. In the gospel, it's under John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's God's promise, my friend. Now, if you've never made that prayer, if you've never called upon the name of Jesus to be saved, I believe that would be a good thing to get settled right now. Well, what else do I got to do, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. You need to repent. What does that word repent mean? That means to turn from, turn from what? Those old ways. Quit living the way you used to live. Quit doing the things that you used to do. Quit going to the places that you used to go to. Quit listening to the same old music that you used to live to. And turn to, turn to who? Turn to God. And just rest in him and him alone to deliver you and get you through this, my friends. And he'll be faithful. Amen. And then finally, what you need to do is you need to believe. You need to believe what? The gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. He died. He was buried. He resurrected. And he ascended. And he sitteth at the right hand of the Father today, making intercession for you and I. Oh, my friends. Now, if you believe, if you believe that gospel, just bow your head right now and ask God to save you. And if you truly believe it in your heart, he'll do it right where you're at this very moment. Don't tarry. Don't tally. Just get it settled, my friends. It'll be the greatest decision you've ever made in your life. I'll give you a moment to do that. Let me pray. Oh, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that all those under the sound of my voice this afternoon, Father, might make that decision for eternal life, Father, that they would come to you, Father, understanding their need of a Savior, Lord, understanding there's nothing they can do to save themselves, but understanding that you made a way, repent of their sins, believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and, Father, become gloriously saved and a child of the King. Oh, God, move as only you can. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Father, for all that you continue to do for each and every one of us. I pray now that many decisions were made for Christ today. I pray, dear God, that the holy, mighty hand of God touch people, Father. 
And dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you call me to be a preacher, to be a man of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And be with all those that have made decisions. Get them to a good church. Now, if you live in the Cantonment, Pensacola area, we've just started a new work here. Bible Believers Baptist Tabernacle, 380 South Highway 29. You can see us on Facebook under Bible Believers Baptist Tabernacle. Our church times and services are there listed. And I pray that if you come, you'll be blessed. I believe you will. Thank you. Thank each and every one of you for listening once again. This is Pastor Godinas signing off for another edition of Valiant for Biblical Truth. And I pray that God touched and moved in your hearts and in your lives in a mighty way. Thank you. And until the next time, may God richly bless, protect, and provide and meet your every need. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.